But first, we want to turn to the latest on the murder of Hollywood publicist Ronnie Chasen. Police are playing it close to the vest as one possible lead comes to a surprising and abrupt end. CBS News correspondent Ben Tracy has the story from Los Angeles. Ever since Ronnie Chasen was mysteriously gunned down two and a half weeks ago, the Beverly Hills cops have said next to nothing about their most high-profile murder investigation. If there's one thing that we've seen in the last two weeks is that they knew a lot more than they were letting on. That's because earlier this week, detectives showed up in force at this rundown Hollywood apartment building to question Harold Martin Smith, a so-called person of interest. But he shot and killed himself in front of police. TMZ reports that there is not yet any physical evidence linking him to Jason's death. Harold Martin Smith in a couple of days could end up being the guy or could end up being somebody who has nothing to do with this. The cops don't know yet. Neither do celebrity bloggers, but they are still having a field day with what has been dubbed a real Hollywood whodunit. They say police are considering everything from a random incident of road rage to a hitman to explain Chasen's death. It was a targeted hit and uh, there was somebody paid to shoot her and they believe that now they're looking at who paid someone to shoot Ronnie Chasen. According to Chasen's will, she had a net worth of more than $6 million. On Friday, the executors asked a judge to release up to $30,000 per month from her trust. It's all part of a legal process to, you know, uh, take care of the business, take care of her employees. Even while the investigation into her murder continues. This is not the last chapter, and in fact, we're still very much, I think, at the beginning of this case. Ben Tracy, CBS News, Los Angeles. And joining us, John J. Nazarian is a private investigator in Beverly Hills and an acquaintance of Ronnie Chasen's. Good morning from Los Angeles, John. Good morning. And I, I'm interested to know about this Harold Martin Smith character. So we're told that the police think he's a suspect, that he himself has told friends and a comp people around him that uh, he killed Chasen. Do you feel that this was likely? You know, like everything else involving this case, who knows? Is it possible? Sure. But when you look at the, the character of this gentleman, it, it would seem to me that he just talked a great deal and was making himself sound like he was far more important than he really was. And unbeknownst to him, he's standing there when two police officers, or however it was, however, however many were there, show up and he's realizing he didn't kill anybody, but he now has a gun in his pocket and he's also made it very clear that he was not gonna go back to prison. He had done some time in prison and this could be a third strike here in California. And quite frankly, he knew that when he was searched, he was going to find the, the cops were going to find a gun, and he just took. Uh, he literally checked out. He mm. shot himself and uh, killed himself. What do you make then of the theory that this maybe was road rage? That Jason was known to have a temper, and someone retaliated on the road. A, a temper. What would she do? Throw a, uh, throw her lipstick or Chanel lipstick at somebody? You say a temper. I don't know. Uh, I've been traveling that part of Sunset since 1970s. And um, uh, if you look at any case of road rage in Los Angeles or Southern California in the last 10 years, these cars all look like they came out of a segment of Bonnie and Clyde. This car had, like I said earlier, the crime scene was very neat and tidy. She had a broken window, which was probably done with the first shot. Mm. But the car did not look like uh, something you see typically in what we would call a road rage case. So to you, this looks something more premeditated, perhaps. Uh, we're told that she had $6 million and also uh, that she may have potentially known a secret. Do you buy that as a potential theory and why this took place? One of the tips that we got at my office was the fact that there was some issues concerning money laundering and or some issues about the legitimacy of some artwork. Uh, again, Your office got those tips. That's something you heard about this case? No, I heard about the case like everybody else did. And I was a little bit appalled at the thought that this was going to be, someone's trying to classify it as a road rage case. Over the last couple of weeks, we've gotten little tidbits of information, but I'm not sure whether that issue of money laundering and the artwork was involving her or one of her clients. Mm. It's not clear to me as to what those facts are. As someone with knowledge of how this all works, how this type of detective work works, given what you're hearing about money laundering and potential issues with artwork, how will detectives proceed in all of this? Well, the Beverly Hills Police Department is a fine department. They've got some excellent officers there. 
And granted, they don't have the, the number of murders that Los Angeles City has on a, on a yearly basis, but these guys are really good at what they do. Mm -hmm. And part of being a good cop in, in, in the world today is by the, you know, keeping, your, keeping your cards close to your chest and they don't make announcements on homicide cases. They just don't. And in the case of uh, Ronnie, this case is just a real problem for, I think, the mm -hmm. administration of the Beverly Hills Police Department. Well, John J. Nazarian, we ha thank you for coming in today and sharing and shedding some light on this story. It was my pleasure. Thank you for having me.